Hey guys, what's up? Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond with another Guitar Tuesday. Yeah, Guitar Tuesday. I love guitars and I love talking about guitars on Guitar Tuesday, so I'm hoping that you're enjoying them as well. Also, if you have noticed, the camera is a different camera today and I'm doing different audio, and that is because I'm using my brand new Zoom Q2N, which the folks down at Zoom are calling the camera for musicians. So it might be something you want to check out. Please, you know, let me know in a comment below if you like it, it sounds good, looks good. Let me know if you approve of this camera. I think it's super cool. Um, it's inexpensive and it, you know, so far all my test shots have been really nice. So I hope you're enjoying it. Also, please do me that huge favor and hit the like and the share button and all that kind of stuff. I really appreciate your help getting the word out there about my channel, trying to grow it, you know, how it goes. But what I'm here to talk about today is what makes a good acoustic guitar for recording purposes. Last week I discussed my HD28 by the Martin Guitar Company, which is obviously a fabulous guitar, beautiful sounding guitar, blah blah blah, great guitar. However, 9 out of 10 times, that is not a guitar that I choose for recording purposes. Main reason being is I end up EQing out a lot of what I would consider the good part of the tone. Um, of that guitar when I'm trying to mix it with, you know, drums and bass and piano or organ or whatever the mix is, if there's a bunch of things going on in that mix, my HD28 is typically not the right guitar. So I'm going to show you three instruments today that I do really like for recording purposes. And this isn't so you should run out and buy these guitars, but mostly so you have a concept of what sort of tonal palettes work well. Um, you know, like I said, that, that like rich HD28 sound just doesn't record well unless I'm doing like bluegrass or country and stuff like that or solo folk music, of course that's going to be the guitar for the job. But if that's not the case, uh, this is usually the guitar I grab. So this is my Epiphone. Uh, this is the John Lennon model. This is the, um, what was it called? The EJ160E. And, um, you know, great little guitar, but this is sort of an average inexpensive, let's say medium price acoustic guitar. It's, I mean, yeah, it's an Epiphone or whatever. and there's lots of other Epiphone models that are similar construction and tone. Um, this one just happens to say John Lennon on it, but I've played a bunch of these Epiphone guitars and they all, you know, in that four to $500 range, they have a similar tone and it's this tone. Also worth mentioning, I have a set of like halfway dead or halfway alive uh, Elixir lights on here. And that's because I don't always like fresh strings for the guitars that I record. Uh, they're just too bright for me a lot of times. So I like a good, you know, semi-worn in set. Anyway, let's just listen to this guitar. Right, so this guitar isn't like, you know, typically a beautiful sounding guitar. Um, however, it is really one of my favorite instruments for recording with. The reason that I like recording with this guitar so much is that I don't have to spend time rolling out a ton of the low end, rolling out a ton of the high end. Um, this is one of those guitars that like, I might just give like the slightest bump somewhere in the high mids just to help it cut through. But otherwise, I typically don't have to do a ton of EQing to this guitar. I would equate this guitar to like, you know, if you have like a Takamine, um, or, you know, another Epiphone or a Fender guitar that are all sort of living in that $500 range, you know, give or take. Um, but something about these guitars I have learned that are, they're just great for recording purposes. They're inexpensive to buy, inexpensive to own, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Um, but just great for recording purposes. And it's just not the best guitar in the room, you know what I mean? It's not even the best sounding guitar that I own. So uh, I think it's sort of a funny thing. Now I'm gonna get to my second guitar here and uh, let's just talk about that because it's a totally different tonal palette. So let's just look at that guitar. All right, so this is uh, something some of you should remember. This is my Recording King. ROS 627. This is a notch up in price, of course. Um, it's got a solid spruce top, rosewood back and sides, which are also solid, um, handmade, da da da, slotted headstock, I love it. Um, but anyway, the sound. Now 
another good example of not super fresh strings. Right, they're, they're pretty close to dead, but I still, like I recorded this guitar two days ago and uh, loved the tracks I got. It's super great for strummy stuff, you know? It just has that tone, that sort of boxy wooden tone that so many acoustic guitars just don't get. But something about these parlor guitars, um, you know, it, this is like an early 1920s clone guitar. Um, but parlor guitars are just interesting guitars to record with. Um, great for all styles of music. Of course, they're going to be good for like folky. <laughs> They're going to be great for finger style kind of work, but even for strumming in a full band mix, this guitar is great at that. And the reason it is good at that is because it doesn't have this huge sonic profile, you know? Not a lot of low end, not a ton of high end. You know, it's just sort of a, it's a boxy mid-rangey guitar. But it's fantastic for recording. Um, okay, last guitar up. I'm just going to grab that right now and let's talk about it. All right, so some of you should recognize this. This is my 1967 Gibson B25. Freaking love this guitar. I bought this for super cheap off of Craigslist from a guy who didn't know what he had and I wasn't about to tell him. So <laughs> he wasn't even a guitar player. He wasn't the original owner or anything. Um, <laughs> Something, you know, when I first started discovering guitars like this, I'll be perfectly honest, as a Martin guitar guy, I was like, Meh, that doesn't sound so good or whatever. Um, as I've become more mature and more, you know, experienced in life, I have figured out that these guitars, um, these little boxy wooden guitar sounds, are freaking great for recording. Again, I'm not changing the strings on this guitar for a while, and these are super dead. Of all my guitars, and that's over 20 instruments, over 20 guitars, this is the one that's so rare, like I rarely change the strings on this guitar because I hate the way it sounds with fresh strings. It just doesn't sound right to me. Um, you know, when you listen to like the old recordings of those like old blues guys, um, it didn't sound to me like they had some guy just like freshly change their strings. It sounds like a bunch, you know, it sounds like they ate a bunch of like greasy food and then like noodled around and warmed their hands up and then started recording, you know what I mean? Like, um, something about fresh strings isn't always good for recording. Right? guitar for blues, all sorts of stuff, but even like if you're doing like, you know, simple like R&B or whatever, great tonal profile for that. is a little bit narrower on the B25s. Uh, if you're an old Gibson guy, you'll know the, the neck is a little bit more narrow than like a J45 or something, but it's because it was a student guitar. Anyway, point is, you know, this wouldn't be considered like a great sounding guitar in the book of Martin guitar tone. Um, but in the tone of Gibson or old blues, this is dead on accurate because this is what those guys were using. These old Gibson guitars, typically the student models with dirty strings. Um, so no one's ever gonna argue with you or me on that point because that's just the reality of the situation. But again, not a fantastic sounding guitar by the Martin guitar standard. But. sounds exactly right to me. When I record this guitar, um, 
What I have to typically do to it is I do tend to compress this instrument a little bit more uh, just to sort of help even it all out. I tend to think that this particular instrument, its quiet moments and its high moments are pretty wide uh, compared to other instruments that I have. I just think the quiet moments are particularly quiet and I think it's, you know, obviously the dirty strings are going to be contributing to that. Um, but otherwise it's just the, the, you know, the instrument itself is just sort of, it's got this wide dynamic range. Um, but whole point is, it's an awesome sounding guitar for recording purposes and in the room, you know, of course, if this is just something you like. But I wanted to give you guys, you know, a few different ideas of what I personally like for recording um, acoustic guitars, that tone that I look for out of an acoustic guitar when I'm trying to record. You know, if you listen to like Coldplay or um, any band that uses an acoustic guitar in a big mix, I've said this before, what you typically hear is a lot of the high end and that pick sound where it's almost acting like a shaker, you know, like a rhythmic element, um, more like a rhythmic element than it is like a chordal, you know. It's one of those weird things about guitars in the mix, what the value to the listener is. Um, of course, it depends on every song, but I always think of the like the, the Martin that Chris Martin is playing. Uh, he has one of those like all mahogany ones and he uses like super lightweight picks and stuff. And, the, and he uses light strings and he has a super strummy way of playing. But when you do hear that guitar, it it never sounds like a beautiful acoustic guitar. It's always really bright, you know, which I can't really do because I'm not EQing this video. Um, but anyway, that's just something that, you know, listen to the recordings of your favorite artists and try to like pin your ear on that acoustic guitar tone so you can hear what I'm talking about. Um, that's pretty much it, you know. The best sounding guitars in the room don't necessarily make the best sounding guitars in front of a microphone. So if you're out there with like a pretty inexpensive guitar, you might be in great luck for recording purposes. <laughs> and I would imagine that you are. Um, because you know, 90% of the tone comes out of your hands anyway, right? Tone's in your hands. So practice, practice, practice as much as you can, record as much as you can. Cause um, pretty much, you know, any good guitar player can make any crappy guitar sound really good, okay? Um, so that's it, you guys. If you liked this video, if you have any comments or questions about any part of it, please leave me comments below. And again, share and like this video. I'd love it if you help me spread the word about my channel. And I've made over 250 videos here on my YouTube channel, and I would really love and appreciate it if you went and checked those out. Uh, I think that's about it. Find me on Facebook and Twitter and all that kind of stuff, and have a great day. I'll talk to you on Friday, all right? Videos on Tuesdays and Fridays. See you soon. Later.